first of our spring lecture series, uh, our fashionably late lecture series. Uh, I think there's more people coming if Grant it, it told me the truth on the phone. Uh, so there'll be more, I'm just filling some time until we get some more people to fill in. Um, very pleased uh, tonight to be able to welcome uh, our colleagues, at least temporarily displaced to Chicago, uh, Maurizio Pezzo and Sophia von Elvershausen, um, uh, who, uh, at least for a short while, courtesy of IIT are here in Chicago. Uh, Maurizio and Sophia established Pezzo von Elvershausen uh, in Concepcion, Chile in 2002. Um, and are currently visiting professors at IIT, having won the inaugural uh, Mies Crown Hall Architecture Prize for Emerging Architects uh, based on their 2005 Poly House in Chile. Maurizio holds his Master of Architecture from Catholic University in Chile uh, and was awarded the Young Architect Prize by the Chilean Architects Association in 2006 and the Municipal Art Prize in 2013. Sofia received her architecture degree from the University of Buenos Aires. Uh, Sofia and Maurizio were the curators of the Chilean Pavilion at the 2008 Venice Biennale, and prior to the MCHAP uh, award, they received the Rice Design Alliance Prize, the 5th Iber Ibero-American Architecture Biennale Award, and the 15th Chilean Architecture Biennale Award. In just last year, 2014, uh, the work was presented in two significant exhibitions, one at the Royal Academy of Arts in London, and the other at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Uh, the work has also been published in multiple venues, including monographic um, publications in A plus U, 2G, and ARC. Uh, in addition to regular academic appointments in Chile, uh, they have also been most recently visiting professors at the University of Texas in Austin from 2011 to 14, uh, and at Cornell. The current IIT studio is entitled Naive Intention, uh, which is maybe also another way to say architecture. Um, and looks at the relationship between intent and art accident in design, which are also two of our favorite things. Um, Sophia and Maurizio, you could say, are part of an international architectural mafia uh, that includes uh, others who have been here previously, um, Kirsten and David of KGDBS, uh, Mark and Sharon, Justin Mark Lee, uh, Soil, Atea Bauam. I think shares characteristics of this work that looks again at the question of architectural typology or maybe even architectural autonomy, but now through the lens of contingency and mutation and not through timelessness uh, and ideals. The houses, pavilions, and installations that they've undertaken to date uh, evince both intelligence and intensiveness uh, and challenge many of the current distractions and trends of the day. Uh, and we look forward to seeing much more of their work uh, and uh, also much more of them as long as they are willing to brave what we call spring in Chicago. Um, so welcome, Sophia uh, and Maurizio. Out of, out of nothing. 
and, and perhaps the invention is basically the definition of, of those rules. As a general, perhaps, uh, statement uh, about our view on, on architecture, we could say that uh, we really believe that architecture is a form of knowledge and, and that uh, the specific knowledge of, of architecture as a practice is uh, it's uh, the knowledge of, of, of form in, in itself. Uh, but we have learned through a lot of time uh, producing architecture and probably uh, producing uh, drawings uh, uh, about it. Uh, is th this idea that perhaps we have still the possibility of finding a, a, a kind of open form for architecture. And in that sense, we like to replace the notion of form by the notion of form, which is more, more than an outline or a general uh, uh, line that defines a, a, an interior, uh, an interior that has its own autonomy or its own degree of, of, of uh, uh, integrity, uh, where a certain game can be performed. Uh, so it's no more than a, a, an extension, a certain size. Very, very generic definition. Within that format, that general or open form, uh, we like to, 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 we have developed this uh, kind of method or also an ideology to produce uh, projects based on small decisions instead of uh, this uh, big or grandiose uh, gestures. We understand the project as an accumulation of small subtle variations that. Uh, can be in a certain moment interrupted by, by a predefined uh, time uh, frame. And then projects in themselves could be a, a, a sequence, a continuous sequence of ideas that are in themselves very singular and unique, but also part of a series or, or a, a larger family. This is something that we, at the beginning of, of when we started uh, building our ideas, we explore almost literally in this uh, uh, house. It's a it's a horizontal format. It's a large house uh, in the format of a, of a plate, a horizontal extension that is punctuated by by openings that uh, helps to to control the depth of of, of that uh, plan. So so it's a house that is uh, both a large house and a small house, it's composed of many rooms. Uh, none of them is really big, but the addition of all these rooms uh, somehow gives a more generous character. Some of the rooms are interior, some are exterior, they're capturing part of the existing garden. Uh, and uh, what we were interested in is in this idea that you could get, well, I don't have a picture, but maybe this is that you can get uh, longitudinal extensions through the house uh, that that are more than the room itself. So there's always this alternating sequence in the house of uh, rooms uh, one after the other, almost in a labyrinthic uh, fashion. So you have a garden and then a dining room, and then there's a courtyard, and then a living room, and then an exterior. And all of this sequence establishes an idea that that is much larger, uh, just, just through addition. And, and if the generosity of the plan is uh, achieved by the repetition of uh, rooms, in, interior rooms or exterior rooms, the, we were trying to, to achieve another kind of generosity in, in the section, in the vertical extension, with some uh, uh, pockets of air uh, by increasing the height of, uh, of, uh, of some of the rooms. So there is a double geometry, the geometry of the ceilings, the geometry of the, of the roofs, that always is set uh, towards uh, the, the patches and the perimeter, so as to avoid uh, casting shadows to them. And then all, all of the house is unified by this, this blanket of tiles that covers both, both uh, all of these, I think it's 14 uh, different uh, rooms. And then the, there's a logic, and this is something that we work a lot with, which is a logic of construction or decisions that is based on criteria, not necessarily of individual details. So this is a, the only plan that was drawn for the construction of those 14 groups. Uh, it was an instruction where horizons were the same, so the horizon of the, of the, of the stars
start with the seating on the upper part, because all this always the same, and what changed was the inclination between <coughs> those two geometries. With this instruction, the carpenters had to develop the best uh, truss possible according to what they had to do. This is a drawing that was done after the construction, just to document it. It was done by a German intern. Of course, he was measuring everything. But, but this is a lot of how our context works, that you work with, with some uh, basic uh, instruction that then can be instrumentalized according to the case. And in, in, in a way, the, the, the house is, uh, uh, occupies a, a larger garden and it's, uh, uh, it, it escapes from, from, from the surroundings but also incorporates some part of the, of the garden. In, into the, the, the space of the house. This is a drawing that uh, one of the kids who lives in the house uh, gave us at the end of the construction. It's very clear, we are really touched by, by the, the clarity. The, the, it's very meaningful, the way in which he uh, positioned himself in the, in the house. Of course, he has the bigger He's okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, But also the way in which he perceived that the, the garden is already inside the house, so it, for us this is a very clear lesson about our capacity to, the, to, to understand spatial relationships. And this is something that we have explored uh, for a long time, uh, not to describe the architectonic space in terms of projective or, or descriptive, even descriptive geometry, but in a topological uh, fashion, which is more the relationships that space can produce and therefore can be in the, in, in the same way, and not the figure that defines the, the space. This is a fragment of a series of uh, paintings we have been developing that explore precisely that. Now it's going to be published under the title Spatial Structure. And, and it's, it's no more than that. It's uh, the capacity to explore uh, this spatial grammar, the way in which si simple means uh, can define a, a characteristic or, or a unique uh, totality with, with, with simple elements like proportions and, and openings and relationships in, um, among the elements. So, yes, yeah, architects were always thinking with the idea of uh, limit of demarcation. This is a project we did more than 10 years ago with five consecutive uh, perimeters. Uh, all made of doors, 120 doors is the name of the project. And we were interested in the relative notion of limit. Uh, so what is interior, what is exterior, what is public, what is private, what is insider, what is outside collective, private. Uh, there's always this um, yeah, blurriness about, about that limit. So it's a steel structure uh, that then holds 120 doors that open in the same direction. What we were interested in is that the door somehow embodies this elusive condition of being at once the possibility of a relation, of an aperture, but also is a possibility of separation. So the moment you only limit space through doors, you, you magnify the, the, the relative condition. So this was a very enigmatic process in, in the park uh, that then was occupied also, probably you can say the distinction between art and architecture, how willing are people to actually enter conceptually and physically into, into this work. Uh, everything was unified by black paint. Children, curiously enough, were the ones who were most interested in entering. Um, and then, yes, this, this was occupying this position in the park, and, and yes, then it had an afterlife of doors being donated to social housing. This is another pavilion produced in, in Denver for, uh, yeah, two years ago. Uh, and, and it's a, a different format. Instead of a horizontal extension, it's a, it's a vertical extension only with uh, one possibility of uh, access, accessing in every side of, of the pavilion. It's a, it's a complex format because it's in the limit of being bidimensional. So it, it, it is uh, from one side. The pedestrian side, it's a connection between the city center and the campus, which it happens to be the largest campus of, of the states. Uh, it, it, it can be read as a tower, uh, very slender, uh, very delicate, 
But from the other side, which is the side that, it, that faces the, the, the highway, it's more uh, flat and, and, and heavy, more like a, like a uh, billboard. But then the degree of contrast, according to the position in which you face it, uh, turns it into a solid or a transparent uh, object. And in this case, we were interested in, in the notion of emphasis or somehow of reduction in height. But in this case, the reduction doesn't happen because of the size of the elements, but more because of the amount of elements. So there's uh, five levels that are stacking up. And in each level, there's one element less uh, to go up. And then everything is wrapped with, with a texture that is porous that allows so there's no not much uh, interference with the wind uh, and and also it, it has this heavier base at the bottom that that uh, stands firmly so it, it builds a sort of I don't know if it's a bridge if it's a tunnel but it's a, a moment of calmness a moment of uh, a very perfumed uh, place there's ventilation so people can cross through it it's exactly in the middle of a big highway on both sides. Yeah, and you can see the, the lower part, the, the, the main purpose, it was called Mind Pavilion, and, and the content of, of, of the, the whole structure was a, a series of shelves uh, that contains uh, uh, stones. So that was also important for the structure of the whole piece. And then there was this, this vertical connection to the sky as you walk through. Um, yes. With the sequence of uh, reading frames uh, that you can also read in the in, in the exterior. So this this is another uh, pavilion we did, uh, also dealing with questions of verticality, but not in a visual sense, as the previous one. And this one is actually physical. It was an invitation by the Royal Academy of Arts in London that was doing an exhibition a year ago called Sensing Spaces. And they were interested in the capacity of architecture, not in terms of representation, but in terms of actual experience. Uh, so uh, we were very interested from the, very, from the beginning in the, in the character of the existing uh, museum. It's a, it's a, fantastic building. We were assigned the main room, which is this one, Gallery 3. And what we were fascinated by is that the fact that this room already has so much character in itself. There's this uh, high this cordage. Uh, this side, this stratum, from there up, it's a protected monument and cannot be touched. And from there down, all the walls have been modified many times. Changed colors, things have been hanging on it, and, and it's the Actually, the witness, the upper stratum, is the witness of everything that has happened in the lower one. So we were interested in, in the spatial condition of that upper level. Which is normally hidden by, by uh, fake ceilings and lightings and screens. There's all this golden decoration on, on top, which cannot be touched. Yeah, this, the, 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 the proposal, proposal the, the construction occupies uh, half of half of the room, uh, and, and it is uh, perfectly aligned with the, with the actual, actuality of, of the classical building in the very center of the room. But that distance, the, 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 the fact that the half of the room is empty, makes the room or turns the room into into a kind of a landscape for, for the object. So the object is a it's a very Elusive uh, building type, it's a mixture of a uh, table or, or, or a or a uh, hut, and it's composed of this horizontal platform and, and the columns, four columns. Uh, the columns are in fact hollow, and each one of them contains a, a staircase, a spiral, a spiral staircase, and the upper platform itself is a room uh, that has also uh, an alternative access by this uh, 60 meters long. Uh, Ramp that is attached to, to the back wall. So, so in the room, because it's rotated, it not only distorts uh, the perspective, but it also distorts the notion of, of scale. As you can see, the upper room is aligned to the first cornice, uh, and then the access to all four staircases is hidden. 
so that there's no indication of how to ascend or what the purpose of this, of this structure is. And then once you ascend this staircase, it's the hollow columns, you arrive to this attic or upper platform where somehow the, the parapet or the railing is high enough so that it becomes a wall but low enough to blend in with the curvature of the existing ceiling and make this new room that is uh, open to all the golden decoration, to the sky, to the natural light, and that uh, only uh, focuses the view in this upper stratum of, of an, an existing building. This was a, a non-fictional exercise. We built everything the, the same way we would build a wooden construction in Chile. It was prefabricated in Chile and then shipped uh, to London. Our carpenters went along and, and assembled it. Um, so it's all, all in pine wood. And then the, there's these staircases that were also prefabricated and assembled. It's a uh, yes, simple, the staircase is, is a space, they revolve in different directions depending how you access. And it's a moment of compression, a moment of intimacy to then arrive again to a collective experience on, on the upper platform. So the upper platform is this room that is confined but has some little moments, some openings uh, where suddenly, yes, it might be as here face to face with an angel, which is something that doesn't happen every day. Or, yeah, there's the diagonal crossing all the room to the main axis of the gallery. This is another series of paintings uh, we have been developing. It's a series of uh, portraits. Uh, we call it the, uh, uh, the acquaintances. So it's based on people we know. We are, have a certain relationship. It's a, it's a portrait of, of them. It's only a, a profile. So it's a, 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 in, in a way a, a scanner or, or, or a, 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 an abstraction of, of their own identity. This is a detail of one. This is Sophia. I don't know if you can see her. It's just a profile. You can see the nose, the chin. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but what is interesting for us is that it, it is a pro, uh, portrait that depicts that silhouette, the profile. But there is only one line that uh, that matches the reality. And all the other lines are, have the same amount of information because they were constructed digitally and then painted by hand before your company. But that, that uh, precision in the construction of the line, the same amount of curves, same amount of uh, points, uh, uh, in a way, uh, are there to hide the, the, the identity of the original line. So they, they make you see, but at the same time, uh, they make the, the original line disappear among, among the others. So it's simultaneously there and not there. And in many ways, we think that we have been exploring this uh, relation between a core, or the presence or the identity of a core and the perimeter, uh, in a series of uh, suburban houses where the, the understanding of that final enclosure line, the envelope or the skin that covers the interior, uh, are normally trying to uh, uh, hide the, or, or make it even more intimate the, the, the interior space. So in a way, that this final line that uh, encloses the space is a kind of mass uh, of, of, of the space. And this is a house that uh, we finished about a year ago, two years ago. Well, but it's all, all centered around a staircase. It's a concrete staircase, a sculptural, continuous, very dynamic uh, staircase, around which there's a, there's a wooden structure that holds on to it as, as, almost as a trunk. Uh, but this is a very yeah, neutral box that wraps it. And, and, and the spatial structure in, inside the, what we call the mask or the, or, or the skin, it's a sequence of uh, platforms that rotates over themselves in a, in a spiral. They, they, they move from one level to the other at a, at a regular ratio. And there is a, a, a core that is displaced from the center, uh, which is the, the concrete staircase. So you can see the, that the, the very center of the house is uh, offset, and, and, and it, it defines a certain diagonal tension in, in the whole uh, interior. So, sorry, can you go back one? So there's this central staircase, the 
concrete one, but then there's two alternative paths. One is the, the very fast path through the center staircase, and then there's a secondary one that goes through the rooms, which is a more uh, paused uh, path. So because the staircase intersects the corners of the rooms, there's always this punctuating point where you can access the rooms, uh, but also you could choose to walk in the private area, in the, sorry, in the public areas or social areas from room to room uh, on a longer way. But what we were most interested about, apart from the circulation aspect, is that the staircase is a void that actually connects diagonally the rooms in the house. So this, which is not necessarily a large house, has a very uh, generous feeling inside because simultaneously, for example, in this, we are in the living room, but you can see one, two, three, four, five different rooms of the house at once. So this is the context. Most of the houses, what they do is they, they extend horizontally, occupying all the site. Uh, but also what we find is interesting is that they're very literal to, in the way that they expose from the outside the, the functions from within. And ours is, is very neat in, in, in that sense. This is a, a totally different format. It's a, it's therefore that contain uh, uh, vertical format. This is ex extended horizontally and also uh, a horizontality that is even more uh, accentuated by the extension in, in all four directions of, of uh, the same roof. So it's a it's a sequence of rooms with a diagonal system of openings in the in the roof. So the house is, uh, uh, occupies a, a natural plateau in, in the countryside. Uh, so it, it follows that horizontality of, of, of the terrain. But uh, the internal structure is uh, it's linear. It's uh, this uh, uh, double system of ten, two rows of, of, of five rooms each. Uh, without any any circulation, any, any separation between what might be called service or, or <coughs> proper room. So everything is uh, equivalent, it's very homogeneous and and the openings for the for the rooms are exactly the same all around, with the roofs always extending frontally to, 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 to the wall. So so that's a floor plan, the ten rooms that are equivalent, but the adjacency of them is completely different or, or fine-tuned uh, due to the opening. So there's one side which is the more social side and then there's the, the private uh, part of the rooms and bathrooms. And then there are two, two logics of openings, which is the enfilade openings that are centrally located in the social areas and then the enfilade openings that are laterally located in the areas that are more private and then transversely crossing them. But Peso is showing with these openings, these circles, in the rooms is the further into the plan you move, the further in as well they, they, they slide to get light to the center. So these are the two situations of enfilade openings, the more social areas and the, 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 the bedrooms, bathroom, bedroom, bathroom sequence, and the openings that accentuate moments uh, within the floor plan and within the room. So those linear connections are somehow trans transformed into transversal connections always to the outside. The openings are exactly the same for all the rooms uh, and they uh, have a relation to the outside that is uh, very direct. And, and, and the, the, this uh, uh, extreme and, and, and very uh, schematic uh, sequence of parallel rooms are very well connected with the uh, natural condition of light, with the bedrooms with the light in the morning and the, the social area with the light in the afternoon. So they're uh, somehow located, specifically located to, to the site. Then the construction, as in most of our work, it uh, follows the form of, of, of this uh, spatial system. It's a very simple and inexpensive construction, the same, almost the same detail uh, along the, the the whole house. This is a, a completely different form. It's vertical again. It's a it's a compact volume. It's a house we did for some artist friends. We lost the house after the earthquake. I don't know if you are familiar. We had a huge earthquake in 2010, 
and so this is a, a house we did for them. And it was very, for us, very important in the sense that we, it was not only for them to have a new house to recover the, the physical condition of, of their home, but also a sense of a, a, a confidence and, and, and again, a, a, a more psychological reconstruction of, of their own place. So the house is no more than a steel structure supported on a concrete podium. Uh, they had a very narrow side, so the house occupies the podium as a, as a leveling uh, device. And then the structure is it's, uh, there almost without any effort transferring the loads to, to the ground. It's a conflict of forces that are without any diagonal, any, almost any tension. There you can see that the, the, the structure is composed by these uh, six uh, vertical columns. It's all steel structure in, in tubes with, a, with a, a double beam in the center and a diagonal that helps to visitize the, the whole system for the torsion. But the tubes are, have, have a different thickness inside, so there is again an, an emphasis, but it's even by, by the continuity of the tubes. So, so that's the floor plan. It's very basic, uh, it's 12 feet by 24 feet, very small, so it's uh, rooms on either side and a staircase in the center. Uh, there's eight equivalent rooms, small rooms. Uh, two of them are in the, in the concrete podium, that the terrain is sloping, so the podium takes that slope. And then six rooms are in the crystalline tower, in the upper part, and there's furniture that goes along with the staircase and it's the only division between rooms. There's no doors. We used up all the doors in there. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this very narrow space um, is also extremely exposed, so the levels of privacy and light can be regulated by two, two layers of curtains. Um, but what we like is when they're open like this because it's black bones somehow turn into soft uh, pillars in the corners. So it's, it's almost a delicate piece of infrastructure uh, in a very, very small and complex site. This is another fragment of another series of paintings. It's called film format. It's a systematization. These are not the final ballet of covers. We're doing now something that is quite different from, from, from these uh, uh, tones. Uh, but it's a sequence, in this particular case, we have 243 variations. It's feeling forward because we know exactly, we, we figured out a system to produce the, and to control the variations and to know exactly how, how to modify them and to how to produce uh, individuals that are completely different from each other but at the same time part of the same, same family. And, and this is something that we have been discussing and, and trying to understand uh, for a long time the capacity of a, of a building or an architectonic entity to have an inner structure that is uh, stronger than the, the circumstances or the, the, the materialization of, of the circumstances. In this case, well this is the house uh, we were mentioning about uh, the price, it's uh, the body house, it's located in, a, in this peninsula, in the most exposed part of the peninsula, uh, and the site is a, a kind of peninsula within the peninsula. It's an endpoint that we arrive from from the top, uh, and the location, the, the particular position of the, of the, the house is uh, in, in a point where we are surrounded by water in, in three sides. So it's a very exposed in, in the edge of, of a cliff. So that's a arrival of to the house from the top of the hill. And, and the, the, that, that specific position is close, uh, distant enough from, from the edge so as to be in a, in a safe position, but close enough so as to be able to look down and see the rocks and the, and the waves flashing on them. Uh, but it's a very compact and, and yeah, almost a forgotten object in, in the last landscape. Yeah. The basic logic for the for the distribution of the floor plan is this cubic entity has a double wall, so it's double perimeter of walls, and then a cross in the center that divides uh, the space. 
But uh, because it had a, a double function, it works as a temporary house and also as a small cultural residence for, for artists who spend time there and produce work. Um, we wanted to have a, a double condition, which is uh, that it's very a sort of, uh, massive uh, from the outside, and, and, but it has a very, a very informal interior that can accommodate to different circumstances. So between these two walls, here you can see under the floor plans, between those two walls, all the fixed functions, yeah. more architectonic functions such as bathrooms or kitchen or closets, are contained, but also other artifacts that can be staircases or balconies are all also within that perimeter. As you can see, uh, all the wind and rain comes from north and west, so windows are receded into the inner wall in these two parts, and there's an exterior staircase that goes up to the terrace, and in the other side that is more protected, windows are on the outer facade. Therefore, the staircase of this corner is interior. And there are two voids, one is here, the other one is there. And they activate differently morning and afternoon in the house. So that width allows for shutters to move, and furniture can be stored or hidden. And so the same corner can be either a very neutral corner for activities for artists, or it can also be a very domestic atmosphere uh, to, to, to yeah, spend time there. There's always a simultaneous relation that connects cardinally through the house uh, in all four directions. Um, and there's, there's a small uh, difference in topography, so the lower level has, goes down with the terrain. And that creates also diagonal projections, so with diagonal vanishing points to the, to the surrounding landscape, to the water, to the rocks, and to the existing um, yeah, landscape around it. So all these functional openings are not about one main view, but as, as you go through the house, they cover simultaneously uh, these crosses, and, and the landscape is reconstructed mentally by the addition of all these fragments. As you can see, three of the sides are water, and only one is the ground from behind, where this little path arrives to the door. And, and, and there is a, a, a seemingly a clear opposition between this abstract concrete object and, and the, and the wide nature or the continuity between the granite and the concrete. Uh, but we were more interested in, in, in the sense of uh, rest and, and, and stability of the base <coughs> in the edge of the, of the cliff. Uh, so there is uh, a, a single figure without any mediation, any, any middle point between the, the object and the, and the background, so all the forces uh, go directly to the ground. Uh, behind the same, that same corner, there is this vault, uh, uh, a uh, triple height uh, room, uh, that works as a, as a magnifying lens that uh, helps uh, the, the whole interior pivots around it and, and capture the, the diagonal dimension of, of, of the cliff with a, a very selective uh, disposition of, of the openings uh, and in a way also to, to, to bring in this feeling of uh, almost of burden of, of, of being next to the cliff. So the, it's all cast concrete. Uh, this is located in, in quite a remote uh, place. It's one hour away from, from the city where we live, so it was hard to get someone to, to work there. It was built by the local fishermen and farmers. Uh, it's seven layers of concrete that were poured each level simultaneously. The, the technical needs are actually very 1920s. Uh, nothing uh, really important. What we had were cohorts that were about my height and that could be stacked one on top of the other uh, as they went and, and, and poured the concrete. So once the house was built, we knew that all this heroic work by, by these people who live around the area was going to show accidents. This was, uh, yes, very precarious, but, but some of that is imprinted in the, in the finishing material and is part of, of uh, the remaining, remaining yeah, texture. And then there's only these two details I was, I was telling you before, which is windows that are 
either we seal it into the inner wall or windows that are flush with the exterior um, surface. And then we recycle the wood for shutters inside, such as these you can see here, and I'm covering the inside, but then everything is unified just by paint, and that's, that's the only finishing there is in the house, white paint to unify all of it. And it's, it's a place where artists are constantly now doing activities as part of the of the identity of the region. And I think they're, they're always overlapping this experience, intense experience of nature with the intense experience of, of art. And uh, yes, it's, it's working very well. This uh, uh, project is uh, a, a more complex format. It's uh, uh, a mixture of a podium with a tower. It's, uh, it uh, somehow celebrates a series of coincidences. One is the level of the platform, which is uh, almost as a miracle, 100, exactly 100 uh, meters on top of the sea level. And the other one is the presence of that uh, beautiful cypress, mm -hmm. uh, which is very uh, dense and, 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 and impressive. Uh, so the, the, the format is that uh, uh, ex horizontally extended uh, Body. And then the tower is uh, articulated in the very center of, of, uh, of the body. And then on one side of the, of the hill, the, that body seems to disappear and it's buried into the ground. Uh, and the tower has more a relationship with the distant uh, uh, landscape and not with the, with the foot of the tower because it's too immediate. So, so it's seven levels and it's three programs. There's a an atelier uh, on the lower level, then there's three floors of a house, and the three top floors are an office. Um, as you can see, well, there's three, three terraces. This is an access terrace. That's a terrace that belongs to the house, and that's a terrace that belongs to the office. Um, and then there's, can go back? So there's a sloping in this large room that then, uh, that opens up towards the, the landscape. The distant landscape. In terms of circulation, there's one main staircase that goes down to the house, and that connects internally to the atelier. And then there's, you can go through this terrace, take this sort of tunnel-like staircase up to the office and connect to the to the top and um, to the top terrace. So circulations are very efficient. Uh, this was done before. We did it. It's similar system to the staircases in the Royal Academy that I also showed you before. It's just stacking up woods. And so the rail is the center centerpiece. Which is ironically the same cypress. This is also cypress similar to the tree. The tree. So it's a very, very efficient uh, connection and version. And, and this is similar to what we were showing in both in the house next to the cave and in the wooden house. This uh, the, the possibility of a, a, a structure that uh, without making any diagonal implies a diagonal in, in the perception of, of the rooms. And this is the very rule of the of the whole interior, is the systematization of that uh, that uh, uh, structure, that, that model is repeated 12 times uh, throughout uh, the whole house. There's uh, six modules in the in the podium and six modules in the in the tower, always with the same structure that then is interrupted by functional uh, necessities. So the, the, the podium has a connection, a direct connection with the, with the, with the ground, with the garden, uh, and, and you can see there a door. And, and then in the other part is uh, the tower with different axes. But from the street, that, that level is uh, it's, uh, not visible. So that extension, the horizontal extension and the relationship with the, with the garden, it's uh, occurs in, in that open uh, level, so these are the steps. But you can see that this opening is, is, is uh, smaller than this one. So the limit of all those uh, uh, puncture openings are, uh, is, is, are, are the same. So the, 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 the perception of depth is completely different from one side or the other. So the, the perspective uh, is completely distorted looking from one side or the other. So it seems to be at some time the landscape seems to be closer and then the street seems to be further away. So what, what this was just saying about this, this is the tower. Um, for example, this is the level of arrival to the office. 
it's a very small uh, floor plan. But within the structure of an asymmetrical cross, having the staircase in, the, in, the, in, the, in this corner, the relation or the sensation of the spaces varies completely. In this case, it's a diagonal relation. There's an opening in the slab here, and there's an opening back here. But in the next floor, you take the longest path across to get to the same space. Or in the upper floor, it's a cardinal centralized uh, relation. Uh, so, so within those spaces, you, by, by distributing uh, the openings in a different manner, we could identify intensify uh, uh, other uh, different situations. So furniture is always uh, aligned to, to the windows and to the way we want to, to use those spaces. Uh, as you can see, everything here is painted gray in a very introspective atmosphere, uh, interior atmosphere. And this house, again, was all done in concrete, uh, cast reinforced concrete. But uh, it's almost a wooden house inside a concrete building. Everything inside is covered with wood. Insulation is in the center. It's almost like a, um, what do you call it? Um, mural paper. Wall paper. paper. paper like and then the, the outside was uh, done uh, quickly with, uh, with any kind of homework. And what we have like? Not so quickly. Relatively. Uh, and then it was slightly demolished, a very slight demolition of the surface, which is what, what remains as a texture, and I guess all the, all the surfaces are very soft uh, uh, feeling or, or not sharp edges at all. But we had to stop the construction because there was an earthquake uh, in Chile when we had only for this slab there. Yeah, thank so, goodness. Yeah. So there is, a, there is a small, a small very subtle variation of the aggregate from the big volume to the, to the tower. So the only thing that is actually visible is the level of pouring of concrete and not any information about the uh, And, and as, a, as, a, as a piece, the, the, the house has this, uh, again, an elusive uh, presence. It's, it's somehow too, too tall to be a house, but too small to be an office building uh, properly. So there is a degree of uh, uncomfort in the presence in the very edge of, of, of the city. And this uh, last project is a, uh, uh, a house which is in, in Spain, a couple of hours from uh, Barcelona. And for us it was, a, again, the materialization of the building, not only conceptually, but uh, technically completely autonomous in nature, without any connection to any, to any, any uh, say, water system or electricity system, any network, any network it generates everything. Uh, but the arrival is located on top of a hill, and the arrival is uh, from below in a straight line, so you park on the, at the foot of the, of, the, of the hill. And then there is a staircase that connects, it's almost 100 meters long, a complex staircase that. 300 feet? 100 meters is 300 Yeah, so the, 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 the possibility of, a, of, a, of the house to be a, a destination or, or an end point of returning. And, and the way in which the, that anxiety of the arrival is uh, uh, dramatized somehow by, by the ascension was part of the uh, initial intention. So the house in itself is a very compact, again, at a little format. Uh, and, and we considered from the beginning to be a, a, this kind of a, a moment of suspension, not only uh, the suspension of the peace uh, in the middle of nature, this uh, wide nature, but also the suspension of time to be there without any any sense of almost of orientation inside inside the house. So that's a decision. It's very common thing here, but the arrival occurs uh, here. So the ascension occurs under the trees uh, uh, and also diagonally at the at the base of this podium under the the, the, the house. So this is a house that is for temporary occupation, uh, and uh, there's a moment when the first moment of arbitrariness, if you want, like after this long, very prescribed path, there's a moment where you can take either side of the staircase, leading to two doors, that it's totally irrelevant which one you choose because they both lead to the same place. Um, but there's this moment where you take one or the other door, and then are faced 
uh, this is the base of, of the podium, and you're faced with two possibilities, two tunnels to go around to this other staircase, circular staircase, which is the access to the, to the top platform. Um, and again, you can take either one, it's, it's uh, irrelevant. You're always walking around the volume of water. This is the swimming pool, and there's a diagonal connection uh, through the water or up to the sky uh, when you enter. So this is the moment of uh, the point of entry where you somehow can look into the house but you're still not in the house. Um, and you can take the tunnel to the circular staircase. It's all lit by a very blue light or whatever light is coming through the water. And then there's also the possibility of some glimpses, very voyeuristic uh, glimpses to any person who might be at, at that moment uh, in the pool. And the forward of the house is uh, this uh, blind podium and then this open transparent uh, platform uh, on top. Uh, there is uh, one floor that is technical, then the, the access uh, level to this the base of the, of the swimming pool. And then the courtyard has the same dimension, there is like a central pattern, with the same dimension of the volume. And then all the, the house uh, uh, is uh, enforced in, in the perimeter of the, of the, of the platform. So this is the front of the platform. Uh, and there is a, the central room, the, the, the proper uh, enclosed room is over to the sky. So it's, a, it's an exterior. And then every corner as well is a, it's another exterior. So there are four different uh, glass pavilions that are attached to a functional wall that confines the, the, the central uh, pattern. So there you can see the one of the pavilions, the axis, the open corners. And then the central room, the very center is, if you want to be in the very center, you have to be inside the swimming pool. With this uh, punctual selection, punctual openings to, to the surroundings, all equivalents in it for directions. So this is like an elevator for Tomia. All this journey to arrive to this point that up to then was very linear. You were, you have a very prescribed, as I said before, path to arrive. When you reach the low, the upper part, suddenly it, it turns into a multi-directional experience. You can choose where to move, how to move around the house, how to occupy the pavilions, how to occupy the, the patio or the corners, depending on whether you're escaping from the sun or looking for the sun. But there's always this condition that you have to cross some exterior to reach interior spaces. So these are the connections, very punctual connections from the courtyard to the surrounding landscape, which is fabulous. Um, and then the spaces themselves are very narrow. There's always three sides that are open, um, and always this back wall that this was just explained that contains fixed functions that uh, are auxiliary to whatever function is in that pavilion. So the, the, there is a, a, another undefined condition, special condition, because the, the pavilions, uh, the enclosure of the pavilions with the glass panels, in, in fact, are uh, sliding panels that can be open and move to the corner. So the interior, the proper interior of the pavilion becomes an exterior. So that narrow space that's more uh, has the feeling of a balcony more than a, a proper room. It becomes really a balcony, and the corner it becomes a, a, a glass uh, corner. So um, this is again glass boundary. Uh, the system is uh, Virendel beams that take up the whole height of, of the platform level, and that can then transfer the loads through the courtyard, to the walls of the courtyard, to down uh, to the podium. Uh, so what actually is this one of the corners, what seems to be a very heavy pillar is not actually a pillar, it's a tensor. There's inside uh, a steel uh, piece that carries the loads up to the beams and then back into, into the courtyard. So I, I guess that this is, the house is literally and physically suspended in time and, and space in this uh, very fabulous uh, natural setting. And this is, an, uh, again, another painting part of the same series. Uh, for us, it's, a, it's a, perhaps an abstraction of this single project that we have been trying to unfold with uh, time, uh, where there is a degree of uh, uh, distance to the world, but at the same time, a dependency to the surroundings and the and integration with the, 
with what happens around the interior space. Uh, there is a uh, Aristotelian quote who used to say that in order to do work, you have to do always the same thing, but never in the same way. And we think that it's, a, it's, a, it's something that we, we, we have tried to do. Thank you. When they have to, they kind of 
happens in parallel, uh, and uh, there's some painting that is more autonomous, and other painting that is related to specific projects. Other, yeah, some paintings are projects in themselves. Uh, but I don't understand exactly what you mean by masking. Well, in some ways, I feel it's the um, imagery of the hand, as opposed to. Yes, but, but I think that that's in all our work. Uh, the drawings, or the precision of the drawings, is not so important. It's, it's the precision, maybe, of the criteria that is important. Because we know that within the context where we work, it, it is going to inevitably be altered. So we're, I think that, I don't know if you agree, but we are not. Precisely, it becomes richer when when you materialize it and it acquires that imperfection. You don't put it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, well, it's interesting what happens with the, with the painting because we have been painting for a long time, and after years, I don't know, six, seven years, we realized that we were painting the paintings and not painting about our picture, and suddenly we started replacing. Even collages or other means of, uh, means of representation, and and we discovered that we were spending a lot of time producing the the the, the, the basic uh, lines for the paintings. So we had to be really careful with the uh, with what to select. Because you can make with the software a lot of views, and but the moment you have to select and paint and spend months painting a, a painting and all of the canvas. Uh, that was uh, really important for us to, to, to be even, even more, more uh, acute in the, in the, in the selection and the, the selection of colors and the selection of uh, angles. And so, so I don't know, it's very comfortable. Did you guys paint together? Is it yes, 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 yes. And sometimes. I paint you. <laughs> and sometimes also with the collaborators at the office, they prefer some basic layers and then go back. And, and they vary a lot in terms of formats, um, small formats or large formats. And they have to continuously through the process. Yes, of yes. And, and also there is something very physical because sometimes uh, you know, uh, acrylic paint is uh, really fast, it dries fast, but oil needs, needs to put on layer. So it depends. Sometimes you, you cannot make a lot of painting if you're not really sure about the version or the state of the project, because if not, you go back and that's it. I have a question. Um, I noticed that you reference uh, Piaget's, like uh, psychologist. Uh, he's known for his cognitive development theory. Has, he's known for his uh, cognitive development theory with early childhood. How does that link to your practice? In what you showed, uh, uh, there was a there was a drawing that was uh, Jean Piaget's uh, yeah, 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 yeah. circle things. I wonder how is that? Do you link your practice somehow with the? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we we think it's uh, we have learned uh, from that particular study about the, the this uh, we'll try to explain it here. this uh, more schematic understanding of space, which is. The relationship, not, not only the perception, what you when you see a room and how it is contract, constructed or, or illuminated, or, or but the way in which you can think about it, which is something that you can you can do after even after the, the, the experience of, of, of uh, the real space, it's not the the, the perception of, of, of a place, but the understanding, which is in a more in a much more the, in a deeper. Uh, level of consciousness and and, and and I think that in Piaget uh, approach that uh, relationship of, of uh, understanding of space in, in child uh, it's, it's very interesting because uh, there is a moment in our lives when we don't make any distinction between shapes we don't know geometry, we don't know names, we don't know uh, but we can distinguish between interior and exterior. Therefore, if you show a, a, a child uh, a triangle or a square or a circle, they are the same topologically because they, they describe the same relationship. But uh, but formally, then you know that they are different. So it's interesting to for us to, at least to, to 
to, to have in mind that somehow schematic or idealized uh, yeah, approach. It, that is based on, on the relations, a lot of, of what we work. We talk about these spatial structures that are relational structures. And of course, they, they need to materialize in a room, and probably the, the easiest way to materialize that room is a square to, to build it. But, but it's not that we're interested in, in the square necessary. I got a question. Um, what is your attitude to form? Um, I'm feeling that, um, yeah, does form have to make sense for you, or could it be justified just by being beautiful, maybe? Um, for example, sometimes you base your projects on these uh, diagrams uh, with the square that is um, parted in a certain way, and sometimes. Um, you have parts like this stairs that you can go up either way to lead, and they lead to the same room. So, um, yeah. I, I, I think there, 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 there's no, uh, there's no uh, 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 single answer to that. I think it's uh, both ways. We, we think that the, a successful architectural project is articulation of uh, at least three main components. The, a certain program or Function application, a certain place, and a certain construction. Uh, but at the same time, that's not enough to make a, 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 a very uh, meaningful uh, spatial structure. So, if, if, if you make something that is only meaningful, but then it's not functional or it's uh, badly placed in a, in a certain uh, context. It's also insufficient. So I think it's a there are several levels that a building has to 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 deal with, uh, from the more more rational ones to others that are perhaps less uh, or, or or somehow difficult to explain. To, to, but it's sometimes those are the most important. It's relative to every case. Yeah. Um, you guys talked about uh, seeing through lots of In that one picture which you see from the, uh, uh, the swimming pool, and all the other ones, you could potentially see other the occupants of the mm -hmm. building as well, and uh, lots, of, lots of people at the time. Is that kind of like a fear box, like the ethicality, mm -hmm. something that you're also exploring? Yeah, probably that's what I was referring to the relation. The, the relational aspect is not space, is it, it's sort of, you think of it as Particles that put together with, with some structure, they can they can establish those relations. that can be either to other people in the space, or it can be to the exterior that is surrounding it. That 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 can, or even when we talk about the furniture, what we're interested in the furniture comes first. How do we want to occupy the space, and then comes the relation from that furniture out, and that's that's what happens to the facade. It's not the other round. Um, but uh, yeah, of course. It, you can see that as a very theatrical sequence. Yeah, but also it's not only the picture that that's a sequence or or or, or special uh, sequence. Uh, it's not only the, the, the way in which someone can approach and have certain uh, focal points, certain vanishing points, perhaps, uh, but also the way in which you can feel that someone else is, is close to you or distant to you or or more in a in a lateral. Uh, condition in reference to your own body or you know, uh, the protagonist of the, of the situation. So it's, it's I don't think the, the architecture is a, perhaps, I, I, I don't know, I'm I don't know if architecture has uh, ever imitated theater. I think it's only the opposite. Theater is trying to do something that is uh, normally in architecture. Yeah? Those relationships, visual, the noise, and so on are part of a uh, fun experience that is inevitable.
kind of inevitable air and sloppiness of construction and craft. Mm -hmm. And sort of like if if you're the intent and the realization is the accident, does that always have to be the model? Or could you be the accident? Mm -hmm. Like if you built in Switzerland or Japan, you'd be disappointed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they would actually get it. Yeah. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. You know? Like is there no necessity of relying on collaborators who point from the bar set to build the pot? Yeah, but I think they're, they're, uh, that's why we were saying at the beginning this uh, sequence of uh, graphite uh, drawings uh, that are based on the repetition of the same. We think that we never show the process of any project. We never show the, the cooking, let's say. We show only the final version of something. But that process of arriving to that final state, uh, we never say that there is something that is more important than something else. It's not that the placement of one building in a, in, in, in a site is it, more important than the definition of a window or the materialization, the construction, the same thing. Therefore, I don't think there is a, either a, a hierarchy between construction or spatial definition. Uh, we, we think that the accident or the control right. can happen both in form or in, in, yeah. in, in the construction. Or the accident or the control. Yeah, you, you've taken control over the agency of others by relying on things, I mean, no, which is by definition, the is by definition that's there's the next war, is there's an earthquake, and I mean, is it, you know, I mean, there is a process, it's just post-geometry, mm -hmm. in a way. I mean, it reminds me of Ciro's work, in a way, you know, the cumulus project, mm -hmm. like, super specific geometry, the people knitting it or crocheting it or whatever, I mean, it's a sort of the, the mm -hmm. mismatch. Yeah, yeah, but it's true. But at the same time, it's a, uh, it's uh, quite uh, uh, normal that uh, that uh, that process it's occurs in that it, it occurs that way because when you draw something, uh, you can be accidental, be a pain, you discover it later, and suddenly something happens, and, and leave it like that. But uh, uh, the the level of abstraction of a drawing or the documentation of a project, when that abstraction goes to reality. It's going to change for, for sure. It's, it's meant to change. It's, it's meant to be a transformation, an interpretation of, of that technical information. Because so. there's also, I mean, the, the canon of the work which recalls a certain kind of era of 70s paper architects that is in the work from Creer to Hedick. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, there's a familiar vocabulary of the paintings and the drawings and, by people that explicitly didn't build. <laughs> you know, and so in a way, this is the added dimension to the paper architects mm -hmm. who were resistant to it because they thought it couldn't be translated when in fact it was. And that was their main mistake. And they did a lot of things, but right. no. But I mean, but you cop to the sources. I mean, the diamond format and the project that I Yeah, but probably are the rich, I think that this is also something we, we come in a, from a context that is extremely informal and sometimes it's difficult to explain and, and, and probably of course we inevitably think in a way or have developed a method that now we could apply anywhere. But the origin of that is, is probably the anticipation or our origin or our, uh, if you want the control on the paper is because we know there's a high degree of uncontrolled beyond the paper. Uh, so in that sense, yes, we, 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 we want to create something that is strong enough to uh, withstand or to, to be able to uh, come across even after the process. Of course, I don't know what's going when we do something in Japan or... or yeah, you wouldn't want it though, too. That's what I'm saying. I think your agenda is actually more... Not just we'll see. I don't know. Maybe we're extremely happy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 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 it goes up for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did the, the, we finished the, the house on, on the cliff. Uh, we did an exhibition because it was also the launching of this one institution. Um, and the exhibition was called 89 and 1. And the models and, and, and the meditation and the drawings. Uh, and it was a, a kind of manifesto or what do you call it? The treatise. Uh, it's more treatise. Because it was about 
the translation of this rational architecture in 19 degrees to the, the chances of reality, which is one degree less, one degree more. Well, actually, in that construction, it was more three degrees less. <laughs> but, but it was okay. It was assumed as a, also as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a thinking device to, to understand reality in a certain context, and from there, something learned.